Christ put on. A sermon delivered on Lord's Day morning, February 23, 1890. By Charles Hedden Spurgeon. At the Metropolitan Tabernacle, Newington. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. Romans 13, 14. Christ must be in us before he can be on us. Divine grace puts Christ within and enables us to put on Christ without. Christ must be in the heart by faith before he can be in the life by holiness. If you need light from a lantern, the first business is to light the candle inside it, and then, as a consequence, the light shines through to be seen of men. When Christ is formed in you, the hope of glory, do not conceal your love to him but put him on in your conduct as the glory of your hope. As you have Christ within as your Saviour, the secret of your inner life, so put on Christ to be the beauty of your daily life. Let the external be brightened by the internal and this shall be to you that armour of light which all the soldiers of the Lord Jesus are privileged to wear. As Christ is your food, nourishing the inner man, so put him on as your garments covering the outer man. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a very wonderful expression. It is most condescending on our Lord's part to allow such an exhortation. Paul speaks the mind of the Holy Spirit and the word is full of meaning. Oh, for divine grace to learn its teaching. It is full of very solemn warning to us, for we need a covering thus divinely perfect. Oh, for grace to practice the command to put it on. The apostle does not so much say, take up the Lord Jesus Christ and bear him with you, but, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and thus wear him as the garment of your life. A man takes up his staff for a journey or his sword for a battle, but he lays these down again after a while. You are to put on the Lord Jesus as you put on your garments and thus he is to cover you and to become part and parcel of your outward appearance surrounding your very self as a visible part of your manifest personality. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. This we do when we believe in him, then we put on the Lord Jesus Christ as our robe of righteousness. It is a very beautiful picture of what faith does. Faith finds our manhood naked to its shame, Faith sees that Christ Jesus is the robe of righteousness provided for our need. And faith, at the command of the gospel, appropriates him and gets the benefit of him for it. By faith the soul covers her weakness with his strength, her sin with his atonement, her folly with his wisdom, her failure with his triumphs, her death with his life, her wanderings with his constancy. By faith, I say, the soul hides itself within Jesus till Jesus, only, is seen and the man is seen in him. We take not only his righteousness as being imputed to us, but we take himself to be really ours. And so his righteousness becomes ours as a matter of fact. By the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. His righteousness is set to our account and becomes ours because he is ours. I, though long unrighteous in myself, believe in the testimony of God concerning his Son Jesus Christ and I am accounted righteous, even as it is written, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. The riches of God in Christ Jesus become mine as I take the Lord Jesus Christ to be everything to me. But, you see, the text does not distinctly refer to this great matter for the apostle is not referring to the imputed righteousness of Christ. The text stands in connection with precepts concerning matters of everyday practical life and to these it must refer. It is not justification but sanctification that we have here. 
Moreover, we cannot be said to put on the imputed righteousness of Christ after we have believed, for that is upon us as soon as we believe and needs no more putting on. The command before us is given to those who have the imputed righteousness of Christ, who are justified, who are accepted in Christ Jesus. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ is a word to you that are saved by Christ and justified by his righteousness. You are to put on Christ and keep putting him on in the sanctifying of your lives unto your God. You are, every day, to continually more and more wear as the garment of your lives the character of your Lord. I will handle this subject by answering questions. First, where are we to go for our daily garment? Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, what is this daily garment? Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, how are we to act towards evil when we are thus clad? And make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. And then I will finish with the consideration of the question, why should we hasten to put on this matchless garment? For, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us put on the armor of light. I may the Holy Spirit help us while we, in the first place, answer the inquiry, where are we to go for our daily garment? Beloved, there is but one answer to all questions as to our necessities. We go to the Lord Jesus Christ for everything. To us, Christ is all. He is made of God unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. When you have come to Christ for pardon and justification you are not to go elsewhere for the next thing. Having begun with Jesus you are to go on with him, even to the end, for you are complete in him, perfectly stored in Christ, fully equipped in him. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Every necessity that can ever press upon you between this life in the wilderness and yonder sea of glass before the throne of God will be found in Christ Jesus. You ask, what am I to do for a vesture which will befit the courts of the Lord? For armor that will protect me from the assaults of the foe? For a robe that will enable me to act as a priest and king unto God? The one answer to the much including question is, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no further need. You need not look elsewhere for a thread or a shoelace. So, dear friends, I gather from this that if we seek an example, we may not look elsewhere than to our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not written, put you on this man or that, but, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. The model for a saint is his Saviour. We are very apt to select some eminently gracious or useful man to be a pattern for us. A measure of good may result from such a course, but a degree of evil may also come of it. There will always be some fault about the most excellent of our fellow mortals and as our tendency is to caricature virtues till we make them faults, so is it our greater folly to mistake faults for excellences and copy them with careful exactness and generally with abundant exaggeration. By this plan, with the best intentions, we may reach very sad results. Follow Jesus in the way and you will not err. Let your feet go down exactly in his footprints and you cannot slide. As his grace enables us, let us make it true that, as he was, so are we in this world. You need not look beyond your Lord for an example under any circumstances. Of him you may inquire as of an unfailing oracle. You need never inquire what is the general custom of those about you, the broad road of the many is no way for you. You may not ask, what are the rulers of the people doing? You follow not the fashion of the great, but the example of the greatest of all.
put you on the Lord Jesus Christ will apply to each one of us. If I am a tradesman, I am not to ask myself, on what principles do other traders conduct their business? Not so. What the world may do is no rule for me. If I am a student I should not inquire, how do others feel towards religion? Let others do as they will, it is for us to serve the Lord. In every relationship in the domestic circle, in the literary world, in the sphere of friendship, or in business connections, I am to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. If I am perplexed, I am bound to ask, what would Jesus do? And his example is to guide me. If I cannot conceive of his acting in a certain way, neither must I allow myself to do so, but if I perceive, from his precepts, his spirit or his actions, that he would follow such in such a course, to that line I must keep. I am not to put on the philosopher, the politician, the priest or the popularity hunter, I am to put on the Lord Jesus Christ by taking his life to be the model upon which I fashion my own life. From our text I should also gather that we are to go to the Lord Jesus Christ for stimulus. We want not only an example, but a motive, an impulse and constraining power to keep us true to that example. We need to put on zeal as a cloak and to be covered with a holy influence which will urge us onward. Let us go to the Lord Jesus for motives. Some fly to Moses and would drive themselves to duty by the thunders of Sinai. Their design in service is to earn eternal life or prevent the loss of the favor of God. Thus they come under law and forsake the true way of the believer which is faith. Not from dread of punishment or hope of reward do believers serve the living God, we put on Christ and the love of Christ constrains us. Here is the spring of true holiness, sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. A stronger force than law has gripped you, you serve God, not as servants whose sole thought is the wage, but as children, whose eye is on the Father and his love. Your motive is gratitude to him by whose precious blood you are redeemed. He has put on your cause and therefore you would take up his cause. I pray you, go not to the steep sides of Sinai to find motives for holiness, but hasten to Calvary and the find those sweet herbs of love which shall be the medicine of your soul. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Covered with the consciousness of his love and fired with love to him in return, you will be strong to be, to do, or to suffer as the Lord God may appoint. Need I say never find a reason for doing right in a desire to win the approbation of your fellow men? Do not say, I must do this or that in order to please my company. That is poor life which is sustained by the breath of other men's nostrils. Followers of Jesus will not wear the livery of custom or stand in awe of human censure. Love of commendation and fear of disapprobation are low and beggarly motives, they sway the feeble many, but they ought not to rule the man in Christ. You must be moved by a far higher consideration. You serve the Lord Christ and must not, therefore, become the lackey of men. His glory is to be your one name. And for the joy of this you must treat all else as a light thing. Here we find our spare, the love of Christ constrains us. Beloved, the text means more than this. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, that is, find in Jesus your strength. Although you are saved and are quickened by the Holy Spirit so as to be a living child of the living God, yet you have no strength for heavenly duty except as you receive it from above. Go to Jesus for power. I charge you, never say, I shall do the right because I have resolved to do it. I am a man of strong mind. 
I am determined to resist this evil and I know I shall not yield. I have made up my mind and there is no fear of my turning aside. Brother, if you rely upon yourself in that way, you will soon prove to be a broken reed. Failure follows at the heel of self-confidence. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. I charge you, do not rely upon what you have acquired in the past. Say not in your heart, I am a man of experience and therefore I can resist temptation which would crush the younger and greener folk. I have now spent so many years in persistent well-doing that I may reckon myself out of danger. Is it likely that I should ever be led astray? Oh sir, it is more than likely. It is a fact already. The moment that a man declares he cannot fall, he has already fallen from sobriety and humility. Your head is turned, my brother, or you would not talk of your inward perfection. And when the head turns, the feet are not very safe. Inward conceit is the mother of open sin. Make Christ your strength and not yourself, nor your requirements or experiences. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ day by day and make not the rags of yesterday to be the raiment of the future. Get fresh grace. Say with David, all my fresh springs are in you. Get all your power for holiness and usefulness from Jesus and from him alone. Surely in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Rely not on resolves, pledges, methods, prayers. Lean on Jesus, only, as the strength of your life. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful word to me because it indicates that in the Lord Jesus we have perfection. I shall in a moment or two show you some of the virtues and graces which are resplendent in the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. These may be likened to different parts of our armor or garments, the helmet, the shoes, the breastplate. But the text does not say, put on this quality or virtue of the Lord Christ, but, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. He himself, as a whole, is to be our array. Not this excellence or that, but himself. He must be to us a sacred over all. I know not by what other means to bring out my meaning, he is to cover us from head to foot. We do not so much copy his humility, his gentleness, his love, his zeal, his prayerfulness as himself. Endeavor to come into such communion with Jesus himself that his character is reproduced in you. Oh to be wrapped about with Jesus, feeling, desiring, acting as he felt, desired and acted. What a raiment for our spiritual nature is our Lord Jesus Christ. What an honorable robe for men to wear. Why? In that case our life would be hid in Christ and he would be seen of us in a life quickened by his spirit, swayed by his motives, sweetened with his sympathy, pursuing his designs and following in his steps. When we read, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, it means, receive the whole character of Christ and let your whole character be conformed to his will. Cover your whole being with the whole of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful precept. Oh, for grace to carry it out. May the Lord turn the command into an actual fact. Throughout the rest of our lives may we be more and more like Jesus that the purpose of God may be fulfilled wherein we are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son. Once more. Observe the specialty which is seen in this garment. It is specially adapted to each individual believer. Paul does not say merely to one person, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, but to all of us, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can all the saints put on Christ, 
whether babes, young men or fathers? You could not all of you wear my coat, I am quite certain, and I am equally certain that I could not wear the garments of many of the young people now present. But here is a matchless garment which will be found suitable for every believer, without expansion or contraction. Whoever puts on the Lord Jesus Christ has put on a robe which will be his glory and beauty. In every case the example of Jesus is admirably suited for copying. Suppose a child of God should be a king, what better advice could I give to him, when about to rule a nation, than this, put on the Lord Jesus Christ? Be such a king as Jesus would have been. No, copy his royal character. Suppose, on the other hand, that the person before us is a poor woman from the workhouse, shall I say the same to her? Yes, and with equal propriety, for Jesus was very poor and is a most suitable example for those who have no home of their own. O worker, put on Christ and be full of zeal. O sufferer, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and abound in patience. Yonder friend is going to the Sunday school this afternoon. Well, in order to win those dear children to the Saviour, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. In his sacred raiment you will make a good teacher. Are you a preacher and about to address thousands of persons? How better can I advise you than that you put on Christ and preach the gospel in his own loving, pleading, earnest style? The preacher's model should be his Lord. This is our preaching gown, our praying surplice, our pastoral robe, the character and spirit of the Lord Jesus, and it admirably suits each form of service. No man's example will precisely fit his fellow man. But there is this strange virtue about the character of Christ that you may all imitate it and yet be none of you mere imitators. He is perfectly natural who is perfectly like Christ. There need be no affectation, no painful restraint, no straining. In a life thus fashioned there will be nothing grotesque or disproportionate, unmanly or romantic. So wonderfully is Jesus the second Adam of the newborn race, that each member of that family may bear a likeness to him and yet exhibit a clear individuality. A man advanced in years and wisdom may put him on and so may the least instructed and the freshest come among us. Please remember this, we may not choose examples, but each one is bound to copy the Lord Jesus Christ. You, dear friend, have a special personality, you are such a person that there is not another exactly like you and you are placed in circumstances so peculiar that no one else is tried exactly as you are, to you, then, is this exhortation sent, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is absolutely certain that for you, with your personal singularity and peculiar circumstances, there can be nothing better than that you array yourself in this more than royal robe. You, too, who live in ordinary circumstances and are only tried by common temptations, you are to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, for he will also be suitable for you. Oh, cries one, but the Lord Jesus never was exactly where I am. You say this from lack of knowing better, or from lack of thought. He has been tempted in all points like as you are. There are certain relationships which the Lord Jesus could not literally occupy, but then he took their spiritual counterpart. For instance, Jesus could not be a husband after the flesh. Does anyone demand how he could be an example for husbands? Hearken. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He is your model in relationship which, naturally, he never sustained but which, in very deed he has more than fulfilled. 
wherever you may be, you find that the Lord Jesus has occupied the counterpart of your position, or else the position is sinful and ought to be stopped. In any place, at any hour, under any circumstances, in any matter you may put on the Lord Jesus Christ and never fear that your ray will be unsuitable. Here you have a summer and winter garment, good in prosperity as well as in adversity. Here you have a garment for the private chamber or the public forum, for sickness or for health, for honor or for reproach, for life or for death. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and in this raiment of worked gold you may enter into the king's palace and stand among the spirits of just men made perfect. 2. Secondly, trusting to the Holy Spirit, let us inquire what is this daily garment? The Lord Jesus Christ is to be put on. May the Spirit of God help us to do so. We see how the sacred garment is here described in three words. The sacred titles of the Son of God are spread out at length, put you on the Lord, Jesus, Christ. Put him on as Lord. Call him your Master and Lord and you will do well. Be his servant in everything. Submit every faculty, every capacity, every talent, every possession to his government. Submit all that you have and are to him and delight to own his superior right and his royal claim to you. Be Christ's man his servant, under bonds to his service forever, finding there in life and liberty. Let the dominion of your Lord cover the kingdom of your nature. Then put on Jesus. Jesus means a saviour, in every part be covered by him in that blessed capacity. You, a sinner, hide yourself in Jesus, your saviour who shall save you from your sins. He is your sanctifier driving out sin and your preserver keeping sin from returning. Jesus is your armor against sin. You overcome through his blood. In him you are defended against every weapon of the enemy. He is your shield, keeping you from all evil. He covers you all over like a complete suit of armor so that when arrows of temptation fly like a fiery shower, they may be quenched upon heavenly mail and you may stand unharmed amid a shower of deaths. Put on Jesus, and then put on Christ. You know that Christ signifies anointed. Now, our Lord is anointed as prophet, priest and king, and as such we put him on. What a splendid thing it is to put on Christ as the anointed prophet and to accept his teaching as our creed. I believe it. Why? Because he said it. This is argument enough for me. Mine not to argue, or doubt, or criticize, the Christ has said it and I, putting him on, find in his authority the end of all strife. What Christ declares, I believe, discussion ends where Christ begins. Put him on, also? as your priest. Notwithstanding your sin, your unworthiness, your defilement, go to the altar of the Lord by him who, as priest, has taken away your sin, clothed you with his merit and made you acceptable to God. In our great high priest we enter within the veil. We are in him. By faith we realize this and so put him on as our priest and lose ourselves in his accepted sacrifice. Our Lord Jesus is also anointed to be king. Oh, put him on in all his imperial majesty by yielding your every wish and thought to his sway. Set him on the throne of your heart. As you have submitted your thoughts and understanding to his prophetic instructions, Submit your action and your practical life to his kingly government. As you put on his priesthood and find atonement in him, so put on his royalty and find holiness in him. I now wish to show the description given in Colossians 3, from the 12th verse. 
I will take you to the wardrobe for a minute and ask you to look over the articles of our outfit. See here, put on therefore, you see everything is to be put on, nothing is to be left on the pegs for the moths to eat, nor in the window to be idly stared at. You put on the whole armor of God. In true religion everything is designed for practical use. We keep no garments in the drawer, we have to put on all that is provided. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, tender mercies, kindness. Here are two choice things, mercy and kindness, silken robes, indeed. Have you put them on? I am to be as merciful, as tender hearted, as kind, as sympathetic, as loving to my fellow men as Christ himself was. Have I reached this point? Have I ever aimed at it? Who among us has put on these royal robes? See what follows, these choice things come in pairs, humbleness of mind, meekness. These choice garments are not so much esteemed as they should be. The cloth of one called, proud of heart, is very fashionable and the trimmings of Mr. Masterful are much in request. It is a melancholy thing to see what great men some Christians are. Truly the footman is bigger than his master. How some who would be thought saints can bluster and bully. Is this to put on the Lord Jesus Christ? Point me to a word of our Lord's in which he scolded and tyrannized and overrode any man. He was meek and lowly, even he, the Lord of all, what ought we to be who are not worthy to loose the laces of his shoes? Permit me to say to any dear brother or sister who has not a very tender nature, who is naturally hard and rasping, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, my brother, my sister, and make not provision for the unfeeling nature of yours. Endeavor to be lowly in mind that you may be gentle in spirit. See, next, we are to put on long-suffering and forbearance. Some men have no patience with others, how can they expect God to have patience with them? If everything is not done to their mind they are in a fine fury. Dear me! Whom have we here? Is this a servant of Mars, or of the fire god? Surely this fighting man does not profess to be a worshipper of Christ. Do not tell me that the man lost his temper. It would be a mercy if he had lost it, so as never to find it again. He is selfish petulant, exacting and easily provoked. Has this man the spirit of Christ? If he is a Christian, he is a naked Christian and I would urge him to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he may be fully clothed. Our Lord was full of forbearance. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you become wearied and faint in your minds. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and bear and forbear. Put up with a great deal that really ought not to be inflicted upon you, and be ready to bear still more rather than give or take offense. Forgiving one another, if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Is not this heavenly teaching? Put it in practice. Put you on your Lord. Have you fallen to loggerheads with one another, and did I hear one of you growling, I'll, 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 dash? Stop, brother. What will you do? If you are true to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not avenge yourself but give place unto wrath. Put the Lord Jesus on your tongue and you will not talk so bitterly. Put him on your heart and you will not feel so fiercely. Put him on your whole character and you will readily forgive, not only this once, but unto seventy times seven. If you have been unjustly treated by one who should have been your friend, lay aside wrath and begin again, 
and perhaps your brother will begin again, also, and both of you, by love, will overcome evil. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Love is the belt which binds up the other garments and keeps all the other graces well braced and in their right places. Put on love, what a golden belt! Are we all putting on love? We have been baptized into Christ and we profess to have put on Christ, but do we daily try to put on love? Our baptism was not true if we are not buried to all old enmities. We may have a great many faults but God grant that we may be full of love to Jesus, to his people and to all mankind. How much I wish that we could all put on, and keep on, the next article of this wardrobe. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Oh, for a peaceful mind. Oh, to rest in the Lord. I recommend that last little word, be thankful, to farmers and others whose interests are depressed. I might equally recommend it to certain tradespeople whose trade is quite as good as they could expect. Things are a little better, said one to me, and at that time he was heaping up riches. When things are extremely well, people say they are middling, or a little better. But when there is a slight falling off they cry out about, nothing doing, stagnation, universal ruin. Thankfulness is a rare virtue, but let the lover of the Lord Jesus abound in it. The possession of your mind in peace, keeping yourself quiet, calm, self-possessed, content, this is a blessed state. And in such a state Jesus was, therefore, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was never in a fret or fume. He was never hurried or worried. He never repined or coveted. Had he nothing to worry him? More than you have, brothers and sisters. And did he not have many things to distress him? More than all of us put together. Yet he was not ruffled but showed a prince like calm, a divine serenity. This our Lord would have us wear. His peace he leaves with us and his joy he would have fulfilled in us. He wishes us to go through life with the peace of God keeping our hearts and minds from the assaults of the enemy. He would have us quiet and strong, strong because quiet, quiet because strong. I have read of a great man, that he took two hours and a half to dress himself every morning. In this he showed littleness rather than greatness, but if any of you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you may take what time you will in dressing yourself. It will take you all your lives, my brothers and sisters, to fully put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to keep him on. Let me say again that you are not only to put on all these garments which I have shown you in the wardrobe of the Colossians, but, more than this, you are to put on all else that makes up Christ himself. What a wardrobe is this? Put on Christ, says the text. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ for daily wear. Not for high days and holy days only, but for all time and every time. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ on the Lord's day but do not lay him aside during the week. Ladies have ornaments which they put on occasionally for display on grand occasions. As a rule, these jewels are hidden away in a jewel case. Christians, you must wear your jewels always. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and have no case in which to conceal any part of him. Put on Christ to keep him on. I saw a missionary from the cold north the other day and he was wearing a coat of moose skin which he had worn among the Red Indians. It is a capital coat, he said. There's nothing like leather. I have worn it for eleven years. 
in the Arctic region through which he had traveled he had worn this garment both night and by day, for the climate was much too cold to allow the taking off of anything. Brethren, the world is far too cold to allow our taking off Christ even for an hour. So many arrows are flying about that we dare not remove a single piece of our armor even for an instant. Thank God we have in our Lord a garment which we may always wear. We can live in it and die in it, we can work in it, rest in it and, like the raiment of Israel in the wilderness, it will never wax old. If you have put on something of Christ, put on more of Christ. I dare not say much in commendation of apparel here in England, for the tendency is to exceed in that direction. But I noticed, the other day, the remark of a missionary in the South Sea Islands. He stated that as the heathen people became converted they began to clothe themselves. And as they acquired tenderness of conscience and delicacy of feeling, they gave more attention to their clothes, wearing more and of a better sort. However that may be as to dress for the body, it is certainly so as to the arraying of the soul. As we make spiritual progress we have more graces and more virtues than in the beginning. Once we were content to wear only faith, but now we put on hope and love. Once if we wore humbleness, we failed to wear thankfulness, but our text exhorts us to wear a full dress, a court suit, for we are to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot wear too much of him. Be covered from head to foot with him. Put on the Lord in every time of trial. Do not take him off when it comes to the test. Quaint Henry Smith says that some people wear the Lord Jesus as a man wears his hat which he takes off to everybody he meets. I am afraid I know persons of that kind, they wear Christ in private, but they take him off in company, especially in the company of the worldly, the sarcastic and the unbelieving. Put on Christ, intending never to take him off again. When tempted, tried, ridiculed, hear in your ears this voice, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. 3. My time fails me, and I must hurriedly notice, in the third place, how are we to act towards evil in these garments? The text says, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. By the flesh is here meant the evil part of us which is so greatly aided by the appetites and desires of the body. When a man puts on Christ, has he still the flesh about him? Alas, it is so. I hear some brethren say that they have no remaining corruptions. I claim a liberty to believe as much as I like of a man's statements as to his own personal character. When he bears witness concerning himself, his witness may or may not be true. When a man tells me that he is perfect, I hear what he has to say but I quietly think within myself that if he had been so, he would not have felt the necessity of spreading the information. Good wine needs no compliment and when our town once holds a perfect man within its boundary there will be no need to advertise him. Goods that are puffed probably need puffery. Brethren, I fear we have all very much of the flesh about us and therefore we need be on our guard against it. What does the apostle say? Make no provision for the flesh. By this he means several things. First, give no tolerance to it. Do not say, Christ has sanctified me so far but you see I have a bad temper naturally and you cannot expect it to be removed. Dear brother, do not make provision for thus sheltering and sparing one of your soul's enemies. Another cries, you know I always was a good deal desponding and therefore I can never have much joy in the Lord. Don't make room for your unbelief. If you find a kennel for this dog, it will always lie in it. But, says another, 
I was always rather fond of gaiety and so I must mix up with the world. Well if you cook a dinner for Satan, he will surely take a seat at your table. This is to make provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts of it. Do not do so, but slay the Canaanites, break their idols, throw down their altars, and cut down their groves. Moreover, give sin no time. Allow no furlough to your obedience. Do not say to yourself, at all other times I am exact, but one time in a year, at a family meeting, I take a little liberty. Is it liberty to you to sin? I am afraid there is something rotten in your heart. Ah! cries one, I only allow myself an hour or two occasionally with questionable company. I know it does me harm but we must all have a little relaxation and the talk is very amusing, though rather loose. Is evil a relaxation to you? It ought to be worse than slavery. What a trial is foolish talking to a child of God. How can you find pleasure in it? Give no license to the flesh. You cannot tell how far it will go. Keep it always under subjection and make no space for its indulgence. Provide no food for it. Carve it no rations. Starve it out, at any rate, if it needs fodder, let it look elsewhere. When you are allotting your provision to the body, the soul, the spirit, allot nothing to the depraved passions. If the flesh says, What is for me? say, nothing. Some people like a little bit of reading for the flesh. As some people like a little bit of what they call rather high meat, so do these folk enjoy a portion of tainted doctrine or questionable morality. Thus they make provision for the flesh and the flesh takes care to feed on it and to give its lusts a meal. I have known professors whom I would not dare to judge dabble just a little in matters which they would forbid to others but they think them allowable to themselves if done in secret. You must not be too exact, they say. But the apostle says, make not provision for the flesh. Do not give it a morsel, do not even allow it the crumbs that fall from your table. The flesh is greedy and never has enough, and if you give it some provision it will steal much more put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you will leave no place for the lusts of the flesh. That which Christ does not cover is naked unto sin. If Christ is my livery and I wear him and so am known to be his avowed servant, then I place myself entirely in his hands always and forever, and the flesh has no claim whatever upon me. If, before I put on Christ, I might make some reserve and duty did not call, yet now that the Lord Jesus Christ is upon me, I have done with reserves and am openly and confessedly my Lord's. Know you not, says the Apostle, that as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ? Being buried with him we are dead to the world and live only unto him. The Lord bring us up to this mark by his mighty spirit and he shall have the glory of it. 4. If this is the case and we have, indeed, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will thank God even more. But if it is not so, let us not delay to be arrayed in these garments. W. H. Why should we hasten to put on Christ? A moment is all that remains. It is dark. Here is armor made of solid light, let us put on this attire at once, then the night will be light about us and others beholding us will glorify God and ask for the same raiment. With so dense a night round about us a man needs to be dressed in luminous robes. He needs to wear the light of God. He needs to be practically protected from the darkness around him. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, moreover, for the night will soon be over and the morning will soon dawn. The rags of sin, 
the sordid robes of worldliness, are not fit attire for the heavenly morning. Let us dress for the sunrise. Let us go forth to meet the dawn with garments of light about us. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is coming, the beloved of our souls. Over the hills we hear the trumpets sounding. The heralds are crying aloud, the bridegroom comes. The bridegroom comes. Though he has seemed to tarry, he has been always coming post haste. Today we hear his chariot wheels in the distance. Nearer and nearer is his advent. Let us not sleep as others do. Blessed are they who will be ready for the wedding when the bridegroom comes. What is that wedding dress that shall make us ready? Nothing can make us more fit to meet Christ and to be with him in his glory than for us to put on Christ today. If I wear Christ as my garment I do great honor to Christ as my bridegroom. If I take him for my glory and my beauty while I am here, I may be sure that he will be all that and more to me in eternity. If I take pleasure in Jesus here, Jesus will take pleasure in me when he shall meet me in the air and take me up to dwell with him forever. Put on the wedding dress, you beloved of the Lord. Put on the wedding dress, you brides of the Lamb and put it on at once, for behold he comes. Haste, haste, you slumbering virgins. Arise and trim your lamps. Put on your robes and be ready to behold his glory and to take part in it. O you virgin souls, go forth to meet him. With joy and gladness go forth, wearing himself as your gorgeous apparel, fit for the daughters of a king. The Lord bless you, for Christ's sake. Amen.